John Cumbers, the founder and CEO of Symbio Beta, bringing you some breaking news today. I'm joined live by the CEO of Molecular Assemblies, Mike Kamdar, and the CEO of Cadexis, John Nichols. And today there's some exciting news that's going to be broken. Mike, John, welcome to Symbio Beta. Thank you, John. Yeah, great to be here, John. Thanks. So, Mike, what is the news? Well, as you know, uh, Molecular Assemblies is a leader in enzymatic DNA synthesis, and we believe that this is a transformative technology that applies across many different areas. We forge an alliance today with Codexis and, and John Nichols and his team. Uh, we believe that they are the leader in protein engineering, and we think that the combination of the two approaches, technologies combine, combined, will bring us to market even sooner, uh, likely sometime in 2021. Fantastic. So it's a million dollar investment, a strategic investment from Codexis into molecular assemblies as part of this deal. Is that right? Yeah, the structure of the deal is that Codexis will invest a million dollars. And I think it shows their support and conviction for molecular assemblies. In addition, uh, we have a work plan where the two organizations will work together, but primarily harnessing the power of Codexis's protein engineering capabilities that they've proven over a number of years uh, to really help accelerate our efforts. Fantastic. John, why did you do this deal? What was important about enzymatic DNA synthesis to you? Uh, well, first, uh, DNA synthesis is a crucial growing industry. And like uh, Mike and the MAI team, uh, we see enzymes as being critical to enable its continued growth and, and, uh, and delivering DNA synthesis to a whole range of markets. So we've been studying that industry. And uh, th through our studies, uh, we elevated the leadership position of molecular assemblies in enzymatic uh, DNA synthesis. Uh, we started to get really close to Mike and his team and saw a really good collaborative chemistry. And we also highly value the intellectual property that they've developed as a company so far in this area. Fantastic. Mike, for those people watching who are new to the field or who are new to enzymatic DNA synthesis. What is enzymatic DNA synthesis and how is it different from traditional DNA synthesis? So traditionally for the last 30 years, DNA has been made chemically. You use chemical reagents, there's harsh chemicals. You have limitations in terms of length of DNA that you can provide. You have limitations in terms of needing post processing steps, et cetera. Uh, so we sat down several years ago and founded molecular assemblies and in fa founding the company, we're, we essentially make DNA the way nature makes DNA. So it's sort of adding a nucleotide at a time. But the beauty of it, John, is that it can lead to gene length DNA. So where, you know, to get gene length DNA chemically, you might have to make, you take, you know, a handful of 70 or 100 mers and stitch them together. Here, the way this process works is we can make, uh, we can make long DNA, uh, both uh, with fidelity uh, and, and precision, uh, over time. And that's, and, and we think that opens doors into a number of different industries that can't be tackled right now. And that'd be therapeutics, agriculture, DNA data storage, all those areas that we've talked about over the years that are starting now to open up because we can make longer DNA. And it's only going to get better uh, in, in our collaboration with Codexis because we're going to be able to get there faster, better, quicker. So initially, John, I thought that you were interested in this deal because you wanted access to long high fidelity DNA in the future, but that's yeah. only part of it. Uh, that'll be great to have, but, uh, but this is great because you can use your code of over technology specifically on these enzymes that Mike is using. Is that right? Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, we will benefit. Uh, we do benefit from acquiring DNA as a company. Sometimes we build it ourselves, but really the, the application for our technology is to enable the enzymes that can effectively do the high fidelity stitching of longer genes that Mike just described. And um, if you think about it, you know, in, in normal human biology, enzymes do the work of building long de uh, genes inside of the cell uh, of, of, uh, of people and all living organisms. And um, so why can't enzymes, what's the issue with enzymes uh, uh, today? is you know, inside the nucleus of the cell is a perfect environment for stitching together nucleotides into long chains. Uh, take it outside the cell and put it into chemical reaction conditions and, and the enzymes that work inside the cell do not work effectively uh, outside the cell. And, and molecular assemblies has advanced those enzymes and we think Codevolver can advance them to the point of being really commercially relevant for 
uh, for DNA synthesis. Really exciting for us. Fantastic. And John, you're also joining the board of molecular assemblies. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward. So we're making uh, an initial cash investment into molecular assemblies uh, in a very creative deal structure for us. Um, we're also contributing uh, the protein engineering work that we're doing uh, as equity. So we'll accumulate equity as we do the protein engineering uh, work in support of this partnership. Uh, and, uh, and we're really excited to participate on the board level and myself personally. It's a great board that Mike and his team have assembled. Fantastic. Yeah, I would say, John, that we're, we're very excited to have John Nichols join the board. As you know, we've evolved the board over the last year where we've added Helge Bastian, we've added Todd Peterson, you know, formerly Synthetic Genomics, we've added David Wang from Agilent, and now with John, I think, you know, we really have, you know, a who's who of synthetic biology uh, that range into different spectrums. So it, it becomes a very, very relevant board and one that I think, uh, you know, can do some really good things down the road. Fantastic. That's a dream team that you've assembled, Mike. Thank you. I've got to ask, how did you guys meet? Um, I'll start and I'll let, I'll let John finish. Uh, we, we actually met in 2017 at one of your, your VIP Symbio Beta dinners. And oh, right. Next, yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. We sat next, to, sat next to each other and really, you know, just hit it off and really have kind of stayed in touch ever since. So anytime we had a chance to reconnect at Symbio Beta, we have. And we, I, I think we kind of felt all along that there was going to be a possibility that these companies, if they can get to this, the right spot, can work together. And, and it's materialized. Fantastic. Yeah, it, was, it was a cool dinner. I remember it well. It was a shoulder to shoulder event that you put together, John, in San Francisco. <laughs> and uh, I remember talking to Mike and uh, uh, it was a new kind of uh, application to think about for me personally. My team had been thinking about it. So I came back after the dinner and I said, you know, what do you think about these guys in molecular assembly and tell me a little more about enzymatic DNA synthesis. And I learned a few things. And then as time came, uh, you know, marched forward, you know, both Mike and his team and, and my team and I started to realize that this could be really synergistic. John, give me some examples of uh, the things that Codexis does. Maybe there are people who, who don't know about Codexis. Give me a couple of, uh, of example customers and, and then give me an example of how this technology is going to benefit their, their, uh, their applications. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, uh, John. So we, uh, we focus our company on proteins and coming up, discovering and then commercializing novel protein molecules as new materials for the world to make a difference in now a growing list of industries. And we're real excited to add DNA synthesis to that list. Um, but what we've done is we've uh, commercialized enzymes that en enabled low cost manufacturing of drug uh, manufacturing processes. Uh, we've translated that into uh, launching uh, enzymes that have enabled the low cost manufacture of novel sweeteners through a partnership with Tate and Lyle. Uh, we have uh, now launched four different enzymes prior to this announcement uh, that are used in various life cycle, uh, life science applications, uh, uh, enzymes that are needed for sequencing, uh, enzymes that are needed for viral uh, uh, RNA detection, uh, RNA manufacturing, uh, that was a most recent announcement until today. Uh, and importantly, we've also started to use our technology to discover novel large molecule drugs. And we brought one molecule into the clinic and we have a pipeline of others. So uh, our, you know, we continue to uh, be driven as a company to show the wide applicability of protein engineering uh, for today and tomorrow's world. Fantastic. And Mike, apart from the biopharma applications that John mentioned, what are the other big markets that you're looking at when you get to market? You know, John, as we've talked, I mean, we start with the synthetic biology market and that's pretty crystal clear. Then we move into things like therapeutics that, that dovetail from anything in the range of CRISPR-Cas all the way through to therapeutic vaccines. Uh, we've been approached now by agriculture companies that want to uh, incorporate enzymatic synthesis into the plant genome. And then, and then it starts to get further out, uh, although the further out is coming closer where, you know, you know, a few years ago, maybe we wouldn't have talked about DNA data storage. And now with the efforts of the government and, and so on and so forth and, and the servers and the clouds and everything starting to be filled up, you know, the idea of storing data on DNA. And obviously, if you think about 
every cell in your body has your entire genetic code, uh, the, 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 the boundaries for DNA data storage are just infinite. And so all of those applications can be empowered by long DNA. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's really been our mantra. And we've always said that we will, you know, kind of be the, the ink into all those different printers as opposed to being one subset of one market. And I think, you know, John sees the, the power of that thinking in all the different areas that ultimately this technology could, could get to. So, Mike, you're thinking of a licensing model to many of the other DNA synthesis companies, or will it be a machine, a desktop machine or a service? What are you thinking? I, I mean, I, I think all of the above. Uh, you know, I think there's going to be certain situations where, you know, going to someone who already has invented the wheel and has manufacturing infrastructure and commercialization is able to bundle product seems to make good sense. There's other sub-segments where we could go at it ourselves. And then there's other areas, you know, when you start looking at things like therapeutics, where we would ultimately just be the API, you know, but we could be a very, very important API, especially, you know, if you look at vaccine manufacturers that want to kind of get all the preservatives out of vaccines and just say, I want pure DNA, you know, that's, that's where we come in. So I think, I think the model is going to be different depending on the application. Fantastic. John, any, any final thoughts? Uh, you know, uh, maybe just uh, to highlight, you know, this is a, this is a, a very disruptive uh, technology that Mike and his team are building. Uh, it can enable dramatically improved length and, and quality of DNA. It can reduce the cost theoretically of DNA, which is just going to uh, expand the, the applicability and potential for, uh, for synthetic biology in general. And, um, you know, to, to, to um, enable enzymes to do that is actually a, a pretty daunting task. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. We need to make order of magnitudes improvements in the enzymes to make Mike's business truly economically viable against the phosphoramidite chemistry, which dominates DNA synthesis today. And this is the sweet spot for Codexis is dramatically improved enzyme performance. We have, in our history, we've made enzymes do things that no other enzyme has been able to do, whether from mother nature or academically or from other companies. That's the sweet spot for Code Evolver. So we're super excited to show that Code Evolver will once again deliver enzyme improvements that are far beyond what have been reached and capable up till this point to really make this enzymatic DNA syn synthesis market open up for Mike and his team. And we're super happy to support them to be that successful company downstream in DNA synthesis. And we're gonna enjoy uh, benefits by being an equity participant uh, with their uh, growing company. And, and I would just add, John, on top of that, I think you know, we've, we've always talked on the stage at SynBioBeta that you know, our, our goal is to make bold moves in, in the world of enzymatic synthesis and in the world of DNA synthesis. So I think this is, this is a bold move. This is a bold collaboration partnership. And uh, we, don't, we don't go into it lightly. Actually, we go into it very optimistically because I think that the, the two companies and the two R&D teams are just in sync. So you know, it's one of those ones where you get the sense it's going to work out of the gate. And you know, that, that's what I think both John and I want for each of our companies is to make bold moves and really advance the entire synthetic biology world. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here first on SymbioBeta, exciting new partnership between Molecular Assemblies and Codexis. So thank you, Mike Camdar, CEO of Molecular Assemblies, and John Nichols, the CEO of Codexis. Super hot market and uh, super exciting to see this news. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you and Kevin very much. Yeah, thanks Cheers. very much, John. Pleasure. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.